Hello, everyone. My name is Anton. I'm a principal software engineer at Microsoft Research in Cambridge. I would like to give you a whirlwind tour through the InWrite toolbox and show how you can use it to accelerate AI model research. My colleague Michael is afterwards going to show you how he has used the InWrite toolbox to build models to reconstruct magnetic resonance images. Our team has worked in AI for cancer radiotherapy for a pretty long time. So for radiotherapy, doctors need to sit down and draw contours onto each slice of a large 3D image, like a computer tomography scan. This is shown here on the left. From that, the patient's anatomy can be reconstructed and treatment um, can, can be planned. Now, this is a very time-consuming task where doctors often have to sit down for hours. And we published a clinical study last year that showed how a carefully crafted AI model can actually reduce significantly the amount of time doctors have to sit down to um, contour images. And this is a technology that is now being prepared for rollout across several hospitals in England. In order to do this study, we had to build like thousands of AI models. And we were now thinking, OK, how can we take the learnings and the infrastructure that we built in this project and make them useful in, uh, for more use cases and for a wider audience? And yeah, this motivated really the InRide Deep Learning Toolkit. So it contains, um, first of all, all of our own research results, the models that we have been working on and so forth to make that transparent and reusable for others. But with this toolbox, we'd also like to enable other organizations to build AI models faster and follow, up, follow back best practices. And in particular, also tie in with cloud computing. And cl cloud computing is really a big enabler here because massive data sets, in particular in massive um, in medical imaging, they do create headaches if you don't have distributed training available. Now, trying to illustrate here how the InWrite toolbox comes in, um, into play with the model development process. So probably most of you who have built AI models know that you often start out with a script that downloads data that defines the actual model and then it's running the ever same thing about the training loop and uh, you write a report and so forth. And then you look at this report after a couple of training runs and you see, oh, okay, maybe I have to tweak that a little bit and you end up with maybe a second script and a third script that, is, that are all very repetitive. And if you're not very careful, you can end up uh, with a pretty big mess pretty quickly. What the InWrite Toolbox does for you here is that, is that it provides all of the boilerplate code, all of the repetitive bits in, um, in model training. So everything that is highlighted in purple here is coming from the InWrite toolbox. And you as a researcher, you would only bring in the thing that really matters to you, and that's the model itself. Um, there are also provisions to, um, to use automatic hyperparameter tuning, so rerunning training, for example, with a changed learning rate. And this is all thanks to the um, um, to functionality built into Azure Machine Learning, that's um, Azure ML's hyperdrive. Use um, functionality. What I'd like you to remember here is um, that with the InWrite Toolkit, you can take any PyTorch Lightning model and run it in Azure Machine Learning or on your local box. So just take the model itself. Um, PyTorch Lightning, um, if you have not used that before, is a super helpful abstraction layer on top of PyTorch, which again does away with a lot of the repetitive boilerplate code in typical training scripts for deep learning. With the InWrite toolbox, you don't need to write any extra code in order to um, get full cloud integration with Azure Machine Learning. You get distributed training without any extra efforts, and you also get model management. So in your code base, you will no longer have um, a set of scripts, but you will only have a set of models, and you can pick any of them to, um, for training. How does that look like in practice? So um, this slide here shows a piece of code of a model configuration as you would write it to put into the InWrite toolbox. So we have here um, 
the name of the model, that's um, also the name of the class. You would have here um, the name of a folder in, in Azure Blob Storage that specifies where your data lives. Um, also provisions if you want to uh, run the same script on your um, local GPU machine. And the two critical parts here are, there is one method that returns the model that you wish to train. So that's something that you would have had to write anyway. And the second method here is um, effectively telling the in-write toolbox how, how it should read data. So this method here needs to return three data loaders for training, test, and validation set. Once you take this piece of code and drop it into the in-write toolbox, you can, um, you're ready to go with model building. So you would take the in-write model building runner, you say dash dash model lung, and off it goes and it trains that model. If you now want to do exactly the same thing in the cloud, all you need to do is add an additional command line flag dash dash Azure ML. And this is now going to take the, the code in your local folder. It's going to package that up, send it over to the cloud, and then Azure Machine Learning is going to give you a GPU virtual machine. It's going to create a conda environment for you and run your script. So this process here, um, this uploading to the cloud, takes roughly 20 seconds, and then you're good to go and do something else. Or you can, for example, make a slight tweak, submit a run. Make another tweak, submit your run, and then Afterwards, you can inspect all your runs in the Azure Machine Learning Portal. So you get full transparency of like all the runs that you have submitted recently. You can dig in and check, okay, what were actually the command line arguments that are used for any given run. You get the reference to which git commit um, ID you used. The code itself is stored as well. And you can inspect the, um, the console output as training progresses. All of these things are available in the cloud live. You get easy access to all of the metrics that your model training writes. Um, there is also support for um, viewing everything in TensorBoard in the same wash app. And something that I really like a lot is with just a couple of mouse clicks. So by going here to edit columns, you can turn this view into a dashboard. You can, for example, pick, the, uh, pick to display the training loss or other metrics, and then you can immediately see how your different runs stack up against each other. All of the typical operations that you have in, in model building are available via command line options. So for example, if you want to now switch to um, distributed training, then you just say number of nodes equals eight, and that's it. You do not need to write any, um, any additional code for that. If you want to train the model on a, uh, on a slightly different data set, then you just provide yet another command line argument. You can add notes so that you can more easily keep track of which run uh, contains which of your ideas or modify training parameters. And this really has changed dramatically how we operate as a team because um, all of our team's results are no longer siloed away in our individual virtual machines, but everything's right there in the Azure Machine Learning workspace. So we, we will be able to see immediately who of us has the best idea to push this model forward. You get full traceability. So if at some point you need to go back and check, okay, this good model, what did that actually do? It's all there. The code is there, the data is there. And model deployment with additional cloud tools is also pretty simple if you've already trained in the cloud. Now, this already brings me to, to my summary slide. So if you'd like to write less boilerplate code um, for your AI model training, then give the InWrite toolbox a try. You get um, no code cloud integration pretty much. You can also build upon all of the successful model architectures that we have used in our work for different tasks. So there is um, image segmentation, there is self-supervised learning, there is bits around uh, chest x-ray classification and everything's available with a rather permissive license. And some of these bits are also now going to be packaged up into a separate um, Python package for maybe even easier reusability. And now with that, let me hand over to Michael. Hi, uh, my name is Michael Hansen, and I would like to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing with MRI reconstruction and the NRI toolbox. 
Uh, I think this is really an example of an application where the integration with InnerEye gives us easy access to the scale of the cloud and allows us to work with some otherwise very difficult to work with large data sets and long training runs. So, but before I dive into the details of what we've been doing, I thought it might be worthwhile setting the stage and just explaining what we mean by uh, MRI reconstruction. So MRI is not a camera. It does not image the object or the patient directly. We actually get a, a set of indirect set of samples about the object that then pass through a reconstruction procedure and then produces an image that's interpreted by a clinician. We're very interested in this process because if, it, if I leave out some data, if I do an undersampling of the data set, I can create a better patient experience by creating a shorter scan or maybe a scan that has less radiation or is less uncomfortable for the patient. But if I do that and I pass through a regular reconstruction, I'll get an image that has artifacts in it, uh, which can't be interpreted clinically. So I'm interested in developing procedures that would allow me to somehow synthesize the missing data uh, and allow me to pass through a reconstruction and then get to an image that can be interpreted clinically. There are many different ways to work with these types of procedures, but one of the approaches would of course be to train a model uh, to perform this image reconstruction so that we fill in the missing data. And this is what we've been doing with InnerEye. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the data that we work with in this space because there's very few available public data sets and we happen to be used one that's called FastMRI. So I'd like to introduce that and explain how you work with it in the NRI toolbox. So the FastMRI data set was released by NYU and, and Facebook a few years ago and has been used in a number of public challenges uh, to develop new algorithms and has really accelerated the progress. It's a really cool data set, contains raw data uh, from lots of MRI scans and the associated images. So I can look at what a fully sampled reconstruction would look like. And then I can try and undersample the data and then try different reconstruction algorithms like just filling in zeros or other more conventional techniques. And then it turns out that deep learning based and, uh, algorithms actually do a very good job of recovering images that have very good image quality. So this data set is really great for working uh, to develop these types of models. There's also a source code out there on GitHub that was released by Facebook and NYU that shows some of the models that have won uh, some of the early challenges and allow you to train those. And that's kind of the code and the data that we've now enabled you to use uh, within the NRI framework. One thing about this data set that I want to call out though is that while it contains raw data and images, it, it doesn't actually tell you where the important bits of those images are. So specifically, if there's a lesion or something clinically relevant in a certain region of the image, we don't necessarily know where it is. So to allow people to work uh, with this data set um, in a little bit more focused way, we, with permission from NYU, we took this fast MRI data set and then we had some external radiologists actually put clinical annotations on this. So we've annotated about a thousand knee scans and about a thousand brain scans so that we now have bounding boxes, regions of interest where we know that there is something of clinical relevance in these images. This now allows us as we go through many different model training runs in the NRI framework to really then zoom in and see, well, in the clinically relevant regions, are we able to faithfully reproduce the lesions that are in there? Uh, and, and if not, you know, what, what artifacts occur and so on. So this, is, this allows us to work with this new data set in a, in a different way. And so we uh, release these labels onto GitHub. So if you're working in this space, I recommend you go take a look at that, um, at that repo where we have the annotations. So this now gives you the full pipeline from raw instrument signals all the way to the, uh, to the clinical readout and allows you to interrogate various uh, parts of that pipeline. But I want to focus a little bit more on how you then work with this uh, uh, fast MRI data within the uh, and models within the NRI framework. So there's really like three different uh, three uh, stages to your uh, work here. You have to prepare the data, train the model, and then keep an eye on how that training is going. If you want to get started with this, I recommend going to the NRI uh, GitHub repo and checking out there's a, a documentation page specifically uh, for the fast MRI stuff, how you get the data and how you get started. So I'll just give you the highlights here. The first stage is that you sort of have to prep this data. This is a very large data set, terabytes of data. And the way that you get a hold of this data is you go on the fastmri.org site, you sign up, and then you get a list of links to download. But it's actually a very comp uh, laborious process 
to get all this data downloaded and organized. And so what the NRI toolbox now provides is a simple script. You pass all these download links to it. It will set up an Azure Data Factory, pull all the data in and get it organized in the cloud and be ready to use. Just that step alone is something that will take you quite a long time if you want to do this on your local uh, workstation. And being able to do that in an integrated way in the cloud is really very powerful. So then once you have your data lined up, then you go ahead and, and train a model. And we've done a few things to make that easy here. First of all, the fast MRI repo that has some starting models is now a sub-module of the NRI uh, toolbox. So we have access to the PyTorch Lightning modules that it provides in there. And then there are the configurations that Anton mentioned uh, that you need in order to be able to run the training. And with that, I can simply kick off a training run with a single command line here, running it in Azure in a number of nodes. And now I'm starting to get to something where what used to take hours now takes minutes. What used to take maybe weeks is now down to a day or so in order to, uh, to train a model. So this allows us to go through a lot of different model training runs and really uh, figure out what works and what doesn't work. And since we now have annotations for this data set, we can then really zoom in and figure out uh, how, do, how, do, how does it reproduce clinical lesions and so on. I want to mention one thing about uh, monitoring the training as well. Anton mentioned that you can use the Azure ML uh, dashboard to look at metrics. And you can, of course, do that here as well. But I want to call out that there's the TensorBoard integration is quite valuable here for, the, uh, for training these, machine, uh, these uh, image reconstruction models because it also provides a view of intermediate images uh, that the models produce. So you can actually see at different stages in the training what kind of image reconstructions would this particular model be able to provide. So since this is a very visual thing, sort of evaluate globally what happens to those things, uh, th this is quite uh, powerful. So the TensorBoard integration is, uh, is, is something that I use a lot when I, when I work with this. So now we've managed to train a model and we have it. So the question is, can I actually use this? Could I connect this to a real clinical MRI system? And we did a little prototype to investigate this. We used an open source framework called the Gadgetron which uh, is available on GitHub as well, to kind of uh, establish a basic pipeline and then uh, feed the data into the model that we've been training with NRI. So the way that this looks at a high level is you would have an MRI scanner and as it acquires its data, it gets converted on the fly as it streams out and goes through some external compute where you have a pipeline running in this Gadgetron framework. It consists of a number of modules. We, we can leverage all the modules for pre-processing organizing the data, and then we can pass the data through the model that we trained with NRI to produce images. And we can even have a model that now detects lesions based on the annotations that we did um, uh, with the data so that we can actually take annotated images, return them back onto the uh, MRI scanner as they're being acquired and do a full end-to-end -end integration. This whole pipeline we can package up in a container and then deploy into an AKS cluster, for instance, and then have the scanner connect directly to this. So with this sort of setup, we can now manage the data, train models, deploy them, uh, and, and work with them in a, in a real uh, realistic environment. So just to sum all of this up, uh, training these uh, image reconstruction models with NRI is, is, is relatively easy. Uh, we have end-to-end uh, -end tested and worked with the fast MRI data set and associated sample code, and you can use that directly. We can take these trained models and connect them to real uh, clinical MRI systems. And we've also augmented uh, the fast MRI data set with clinical annotations that you can download from a GitHub if you want to really dive in and figure out how these models perform. So that I just want to acknowledge that uh, a lot of this work that I showed here was actually performed by, uh, by people that spent some time with us here as, as interns and visiting researchers. So I want to call out their contributions. and and thank them for, for coming to Microsoft and spending some time with us. And then thank you for your attention and call uh, your attention to these links where you can go find out more about the uh, NRI toolbox. Thank you.